any quick announcements? Rick, do you want to make the announcement about Bible class for the I Bible class? Sure, I will. So, so I talked last week. And, uh, well, I think turn around. I talked last week about the surveys. We pushed the surveys back a week. We're going to start handing them out next week. We've digitized them and we've them also on the website. So you'll be able to go there and electronically put out the numbers. We also pushed this back to coincide. Pastor Fro is going to start a class in September 5th, not the 15th. Um, 5, 12, and 19. That's three Sundays up in Meyer Hall. He's going to teach a class on what is the divine call? What is it for? So to keep us from saying silly things before we know what the Bible has to say about things, maybe we should at least have one class under our belt before we fill out forms. <laughs> okay, um, actually there is a class on the 15th as well, and that class is for people who are interested in the Lutheran faith, what we teach, prospective new members, etc., etc. Um, I, I have already talked to some of you individually. Um, I will be teaching that course. I subbed for Pastor Peppercorn last year, so I have sort of an idea of how he has done things. I'm using his material because I'm too old to invent my own. Uh, and um, but 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 it will be also on on um, there will be PowerPoints, and things like that to go with it for some. Uh, so that starts with the theme. I want to encourage any of you who have friends or neighbors uh, who are interested to invite them, and I would encourage you to invite them to come with you. Uh, I have discovered over the course of 40 plus years um, that it works a lot better when new people are seated next to more experienced people. And they, I've seen a lot of this one. And, and so, um, I just encourage you, you don't have to answer any questions. Just say, we'll talk to them after class. That's all you have to say. But it's really helpful to have someone there. Just like in the divine service, for the first time when people come, you know, it's good to sometimes flip the pages and show them where we are, where we're going, uh, because they don't always uh, know how to follow along. Um, so, uh, uh, Deaconess, do you have anything? Oh, well, I missed everything you said, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> Confession time. But, there's I a did, different community that the, the, the new member class last year, adult instruction, and, you know, it's just really a good refresher on the basics of the, the Christian and Lutheran faith. So, you know, it's just always good to have that review and to hear it in a different way. I found it to be very helpful. So I would just encourage you just to come and um, just to kind of go, oh yeah, that's right, that's what the fourth commandment is, and what does that mean in regards to authority and church, whatever. You know, so. Yeah, thank you, Deacons. Um, it, it's also, uh, I have discovered, um, very helpful to understand the Catechism. We oftentimes talk about the Catechism, but we really don't know what it is we're talking about. But if you look at how the Catechism is laid out, I, I have to say, having taught that extensively for the last seven years in Kenya, um, I, 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 I caught on to things I had missed for the previous 45, uh, uh, okay? Um, let, me, let me give you one example. Um, you know, the way Luther sets out the catechism, it, it's very genius. He begins with the law of God, because that way we recognize where we stand before God as sinners. Not so that we keep the law of God so that we can go before God, but that we need God because we can't go before Him. So somebody's gotta fix this mess. And, and then, if you look at the Apostles' Creed, uh, you know, we, we think about that off the top of our head, although while we say it, uh, it's a baptismal creed. But look at it. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And right in the middle of the first three portions of the Catechism, uh, that is um, Ten Commandments, Creed, Lord's Prayer, how we respond to God in worship, 
with pray, praise, and give thanks. Okay, right in the middle of that, and right in the middle of the creed, is the second article of the creed. Justification by grace. And by the way, before Luther's time, the catechism was taught as the twelve apostles got together, had a little convention, and each one contributed a statement. I believe in God the Father. Second apostle, almighty creator of heaven and earth. <laughs> and so on. In, in a, Luther was the first one to talk about the creed as the triune uh, after the mid medieval ages. Before the creed was written down, yes, it was confessed that way. But after, it was mostly confessed as statements by twelve apostles um, rather than, than a confession of faith. Just a little interesting aside. Thank you, Deaconess. Anyone else with any comments, questions, or things we should know? Okay, it's good to see more of you here today. We give thanks and praise to God. And um, just as a little aside, since I don't get to preach for a couple more weeks, uh, I, I, I thought I'd throw this out. I, I think it's fair to say now to people, uh, floods, fires, hurricanes, um, all those kinds of things, um, you know, maybe it's time for us to look internal uh, for repentance. We have a lot to repent of in this nation, in this state, in this community. And at the same time, know that we have a merciful God for the sake of his elect, which you are. Okay, so find your comfort there, not in the fact that we're not like those two there. All right? Um, we join together in confessing the our, our, and praying the prayer which our Lord has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Sunday, no, the 12th begins uh, Sunday school, correct? The 12th, is that right? I don't know either. I should know these things. <laughs> the 12th begins Sunday school, the 12th is rally day, and the 12th, all of the smoke will be gone, and we'll be able to have a picnic outside. Sure. <laughs> Thanks be to God, John Paul the prophet. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Trump. Do you know how bad the smoke was? We went to Costco the other day and got some good cheese. And I kind of got all the smoke to cook up. Well, at least it was good. That's good. <laughs> yes. So, welcome to Bible study for the last time in the sanctuary. Maybe. Yeah. If you were thankful for polished floors, but with the polished floors, the Bibles migrated. They're not here. They're on the other side, the hallway going to the men's. And the study sheets for this uh, remainder of six and seven are gone. I haven't been able to find them. And if I follow them or not, well, you just get confused as I go along there. So, do you bring Daniel for no, we're in Mark. John Paul, do you need some? We just we'll go without it. We're gonna punt. So we stopped in Mark 6. And we we're working 30. To 34. 
and uh, well, we're going to reread that. And uh, um, we'll probably take the whole chapter and see if we can finish six and start on seven. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourself to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they were, had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they ran there on foot from all of the towns and got there ahead of them. And when he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, this is a desolate place, and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy some, themselves something to eat. But he answered them, you give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them? And he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said five and two fish. And he commanded them all to sit down in groups on the green grass. And so they sat down in groups by hundreds and fifties. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, looked up to heaven and said a blessing, and broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all, and they all ate and were satisfied. And he took, they took up 12 baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. And those who ate the loaves were 5,000 men. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up on the mountain to pray. And when evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land, and he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. He meant to pass them by, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them, and the word, the wind ceased, and they were utterly astounded, and for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. And when they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored on the shore. And when they got into the boat, the people immediately recognized him. And he ran and ran about the whole region and began to bring the sick people on their beds where, to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he came in villages, cities, or countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and informed him that he might touch even the fringe of his garment. And as many touched it were made well. So, in this whole section, you have amazing events happening that should have been like a lightning rod saying, this is who Jesus is. And the disciples don't get it and they don't see it so much so that we get the statement, and their hearts were hardened. 
And, and as they said in Mark, watch the disciples all the way through the resurrection. Because the disciples have this roller coaster sort of faith, but they seem to be getting dumber and dumber. The more time they spend with Jesus. So, in this whole section, and what things from the Old Testament jump out to you as things they should have seen? We'll start with feeding of the 5,000. What should have been going in their flash drive in their brain when they are coming up upon the feeding of the 5,000? Man, the feeding in the Exodus area. Well, the apostles are human and were human. And oftentimes we struggle trying to believe. If you look at what's going on in our nation right now, what the heck? I mean, <laughs> and so I, I think that they see things that they can't process in their human brain just like we can. And, okay. and God chose them for a, a reason, right? Because after he died, they actually went out and spread his word, and they were tortured and crucified for that. There's a long process between his death, resurrection, and then going out. But, so Mary says, what's going on in our nation? All of you read the Old Testament. What happened to Israel and Judah? What's going on in our nation? Yeah. I don't know what exile is going to look like, but that's where our nation's headed. Right. We hope that with our witness, that there are others who are part of the kingdom before we are absolutely silenced. But we know, we know the agents that the Lord is going to use. He used them before. He used unbelievers. He used those that were hostile to the faith. And unless they heed what we just heard from Pastor Brother, unless there is a massive repentance, you know where it's going. First God, hey, God is not on our side as a nation. That's where God is. Yeah. God has revealed himself as a warrior. God you read the Old Testament, what does the prophet say? God is your enemy. Isaiah, Jeremiah, yeah, Joel, Hosea, Amos. Yeah, God is your nation's enemy unless they repent. God is your friend. God is your savior. God loves you. God is with you. And God is with his people. But in the nation? Oh, that looks like a bumpy road. Don't miss their sound. Pardon? People don't want to believe now. Right. Yeah. They don't believe. So here, these people, just like us, should have tapes running in their head, CDs running in their head, and the first one is the manna. Didn't he feed people? Why are you looking at the food shortage of, you know, five loaves, two fish, a bunch of people that don't have food and don't realize help is right there? What's the second big one that shows up? What's the second big one? We're walking. 
vacuum. We're walking on water. Pardon? The storm. Yeah, the storm. But in the Old Testament, we have not only really God saying he was the God of the waters and would still the waters from Psalm 17, but he also said that he was the one who controlled the wind and the waves in Isaiah, in Job, and in Psalm 77 as well. And then, we're going to look at this one. Go to Isaiah. Isaiah 35. Isaiah 35, 4 to 6. And this you need to just have in your memory through 6 and through 7. So Isaiah 35, 4 to 6. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with recompense of God. He will come and save you. The eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped. And then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness, streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. That could be in the So what's the big thing? Jesus, what is he doing in this world? He heals the, the sick thing. At the lake. And therefore, the God of the manna is here. The God of nature who stills the storms is here. The God who's going to come restore all things is healing the sick. And it's going to really be reinforced in chapter 7. And then, there's one futuristic thing that runs through this and the feeding of 4,000 in the next chapter. That comes through Jesus as he feeds the people. Did you pick it up? He looked up to heaven. what Jesus is doing. He did it when he fed the 5,000. He'll do it when he fed the 4,000. He did it at the last Passover and the first Lord's Supper. And he's doing it again today. He looked up to heaven. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So he's asking his father's blessing? Look to heaven. 
you cannot you cannot really divine the Trinity, but yes, we see some of the interaction of the Trinity with some of these words. Yeah. You know, who gives us the Lord's Supper? This is a trick question. <laughs> Ask a three-year-old. Who instituted it was Jesus on the last Passover. Who gave it to us? Well, I guess if you want to, if you want to just do stupid gymnastics, you can say God the Father gave it to us. But it's only really there because God the Spirit is also present. So God gave us the Lord's Supper. Now, whom do you dine with at the Lord's table? Well, I dine with the Spirit. Yeah. Gary dines with Jesus. And probably Walt's dining with God the Father. And if you want to play that kind of gymnastics, God gives us the Son. God is present. Listen to the liturgy. Oh, and by the way, we're dining with Pastor Lindsay. And Elaine's guardian angel. Isn't that who we're dining with at the Lord's Supper? Yes. So it looks to heaven. We look to heaven too. But we, we often think of a, a three layered universe. Heaven's there, but we know where hell is. And we're right in the middle, huh? No. We have, in English, spatial words. We can only understand things spatially. The finger of God is the Spirit. The eye of God, the mouth of God. We can only understand things as we see them. We give God yeah, human attributes, but God's a spirit. Maybe that's why we're so like related to Jesus. He took on a human body just like us. And we can talk about his eye and his hand and his feet and his face. <clears throat> the face of the Lord yeah, looks upon you. Got the bottom? Yes. Okay. There was a hand over here. Yeah. Oh, this is a final service for the prayer and the letter. Therefore, the angels and all the coming out of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name. Evermore, pray to you. Yeah. Divine service one, two, three, four, five. It's all there. One of my favorite phrases in the preface. Therefore, with angels and archangels, all the company of heaven, we laud and thank Every sainted person of our family who's died here and is with Christ is guess what? At 4701 Grove Street. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. Thank you, Pastor. I just wanted to mention, too, that during the uh, Reformation period, in the midst of the plagues, especially, and the post-Reformation period, uh, when the confession was so, so necessary, that was a great comfort to people, knowing that when they went to the table of Christ, they were not there by themselves, but those who had died in the faith we're present with Christ, for where He is, there is His church, and you, you've articulated that quite well. Thank you. Yeah, one of the most memorable, I'll get to you in a minute, one of the most memorable All Saints Day sermons was delivered here by Dr. Arthur Just, in which he reminded us of the church in England that would recall the names of those who died in Christ 
at, at the institution of the Lord's Supper to remind the congregation that Norm Rooker, present, Carol Fabian, present, just to mention a few of the recent ones, so that they would announce their names and say they are present here in the summer. Okay, hand here, hand here. So if you passed out food to 5,000 people from a couple of loaves and two fish, how would you process that? <laughs> exactly. And, I say, and, and, and awesome. notice the other thing, <laughs> that they had enough food from the 12 tribes of the new Israel afterwards. How do you process that? And that's probably what the apostles were going through. It's like, what did we just see? How, how do you and, process that in the human brain? And we're going to hear this phrase, they didn't process it. Their hearts were hard. That is an amazing statement. And it comes out here, and it's going to come up in the next chapter as well. They couldn't see it because their hearts were hard. They did not understand the walking in the water. Oh, by the way, when Jesus walks on the water, what does he say? And go in me, Yahweh. He uses the name of God. It is I. And they didn't understand. He just went ahead and whipped out his driver's license and said, See, I'm God. And they didn't understand. It won't. Well, you know, one of the things I think about at times when, you know, you can say, oh, this nation's not going in the right direction, just get down, you know, blah, blah. Just remember that 24 hours a day, somewhere, this community is going on, you know, and God is the man, you know. Those angels and archangels are there and present, you know. So you can't think that things are going all that bad. God's here. Yeah. yeah, when I taught adult instruction and got to the Lord's Prayer, one of the things I said, remember, every time you pray the Lord's Prayer, you are not praying alone. That's why we don't pray my Father, who art in heaven. It is our Father. Yeah. Because somewhere, in this world, someone is praying the Our Father, even though we just did it a few minutes ago with the opening, and oh, we won't do it again until the second service. Oh no, it is constant. Communion is going on. The Lord's Supper is going on. That's why we believe when the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints. <clears throat> What's the difference? The Christian Church here on earth and the Christian Church here on earth is praying with us and celebrating the Lord's Supper. But guess what? We don't know what's going on with the communion of saints. In this it is much bigger than that which we can see or define. We often do this study of the New Testament. For three years, these 12 disciples live intimately with Jesus, and we always think, how could they not get it? We like to think we would be different. I'm sure we wouldn't. What a blessing it is that in this day and age we can look back and realize that this is just like our lives. We struggle every day with the same questions, the same thoughts. We don't get it. You know, disciples, it's miraculous that they actually got it after the resurrection. I mean, suddenly they believe. After three years of seeing miracles and, and reliving the Old Testament every day of their life through Jesus. And again, it's 
miraculous that we can live that life every day with the same doubts, same concerns, and then at our resurrection, at the Lord's Supper, also come to that faith and understand. It also reminds me of Mary. When, when the Gabriel said, you will give birth, she believed. How miraculous that must have been. Yes. So, No, the questions we're heading to Mark 7. I have an agenda. My agenda is to be at a perfect place to pause when Pastor Fro begins his study for three weeks so that at the end of September I can begin with Mark 8. So, Mark 7. Now when the Pharisees gathered together with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they came from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching the doctrines as doctrines the commandments of men. And you, you leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. And he said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and your mother, and whatever and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, if a man tells his father or his mother, whatever you would have gained from me is korban, that is, given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and many such things you do. And he called the people to him again, and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him, but the things that come out of a person are what defile him. And when he had entered the house, and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Then you are also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him? Since it enters not his heart, but his stomach, and is expelled, thus he declared all food clean. And he said, What comes out of a person is what the final sin. For from within, out of the heart of a man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness, <coughs> and these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. So, that was a lot of last week and this week's gospel lesson. So what uncleanness is God concerned about? What comes out of a person. Right, what comes out of a person. Now he's concerned about that, not concerned about this tradition. As Pastor Fro, Fro said last week, this is not about hygiene. This is not washing your hands before you eat. This is a ceremonial thing. 
of dipping the fingers in the water and holding them up to say that you're ritually clean. It's not about cleaning the inside of vessels. Yeah? It's about cleaning the outside to say that they are set aside for this holy purpose of holy <coughs> Um, he's concerned about uh, what comes out of a person that defiles a person because there's something that comes out. There had to have been something evil, something despicable there. And so it's the nature of man, the, the sin that we all have. And so that's what he's concerned about. Right. Mm -hmm. And what is despicable and horrible and just ungodly in every one of us. You mean sin? Yeah. And I don't care what your gender is. <coughs> it's that old Adam. Human nature. In you. Right. Yeah. I love Luther's comment about baptism and confession. When you're baptized into Christ, you are put on Christ. The new Adam is now your identity. And you drown the old Adam in the waters of baptism. But the old Adam is a good swimmer. A good swimmer. That's why you need to go to confession. <clears throat> so that you can return in absolution to your baptism. What comes out of us is often the old Adam. It's that sin nature in us. Yeah, I'm going to play the role of a psychiatrist. And I'm going to diagnose every one of you as schizophrenic. have two personalities within you. The old Adam and who you are in Christ, the new Adam. This is what we want to grow into every day. The whole reason we put our protoplasm in Bible class is so that the Word of God <coughs> will continue to give us growth in faith. And the reason we kneel up here is because we come here as sin sick. Every one of us recognizes our sickness. And we need medicine. And God prescribed it. We have to take a tablet and drink it down. Wafer and cry. That's for that sickness. And the word of God gives us the growth. Dr. David Scare hates my business card. I have a business card. On my business card, what do I have? Anybody seen it? It used to be the letterhead of this congregation, too, before it became Holy Cross. It had a seed with a plant growing up. And in the seed, there was a symbol for baptism, the Lord's Supper, and the Word of God. And a Bible passage. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. David Scare said, you can't grow in faith. Once you're in faith, you're in faith. You grow in sanctification and life. That is a bad image. Like a few other things that he told me, I didn't pay attention. <laughs> because we grow through the word of God. Yes, it's in our life, it's not in our faith. Once you have faith, you have faith. But you do grow in Christian faith.
and life and sanctification. And we need to return to our baptism to be instructed in the word and we do this. The uncleanness he's concerned about is that which comes from the old nature. So, racing through <coughs> the end. 724. And from there, he arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Tyre and Sidon, Gentile territory again. And he entered a house and did not want anyone to know, yet he could not be hidden. But immediately a woman, whose little daughter had an unclean spirit, heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, yes, Lord. Yet, even the dogs at the table eat the children's crops. And he said to her, for this statement, you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter. And she went home and found the child lying in bed and the demon gone. And then he returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. And they brought him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment. And he begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers in his ears, after spitting, touched his tongue, and looked up to the heaven. He sighed and said to him, Ephetah, that is, be open. And his ears were open, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one that the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed him. Anna was <coughs> astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is next Sunday's Gospel lesson. I avoided the Gospel lesson today, went to the Old Testament lesson, and I'm going to go for the Gospel lesson next week. But anyway, <coughs> Sarah Phoenician woman, she is a Gentile, definitely not part of, of God's people. But she comes to Jesus. Yeah. What did this woman experience? God's mercy. She experienced mercy and she pleads for him to have mercy because Jesus wants to find out does she have any faith besides, you know, coming to a merciful God. He says, hold it. I can't help you. My mission right now is to the children of Israel. Jesus yet. But even the Gentiles get the crops. They're under your mercy. They're not in your covenant. And Jesus tests her faith. And because of her faith, looking to the God of Israel as being the God of all nations, he says, Go. Your daughter is healed. And then we get Isaiah 35, 4 to 6, repeated again. Because the deaf hear and the need to speak. Chapter 8, we're going to get into Isaiah 35 again, because we're going to find 
the bottom. Great stuff with that. Okay, thank you for letting me race through the end here so that we can take a good break for the next three weeks. And we will begin in Mark 8. Um, I hope that the Academy uh, Kindergarten will carry all of your Bibles into Meyer Hall next Wednesday at the end of chapel. If not, if you find Bibles, when you head for Bible study next week, please take one with you. Okay. Let's close with the benediction of the Lord. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all. Amen. Amen.